Now, once you uh, enter all the parties, what you also you can do if you uh, if you have that information at this time, then you can also uh, specify what's called services requested or standing orders, what they like to have on every single job once we start taking depots in the future. So, for example, let's say I go to uh, the main defendant attorney, Mr. Attorney Defendant, and he told me that uh, he likes that condensed index ASCII package that we have created. He wants that on every single depot that we will be doing. So you simply go highlight him at, at the top grid and go to bottom grid and simply say new and uh, you will go to a production item subgroup and then basically you look for that condensed index ASCII pack okay and then you simply say save and close so now I'm basically specifying that once we start working on this case and create jobs and witnesses this item condensed index ASCII pack will be passed along to the calendar and to the production department as a standing order and you can specify and then I then the only other thing I want to do is that here plaintiff's attorney told me that he's a summation user and he'd like to have everything in an amicus format so that's something that I need to specify so I highlight his name I go to new and again I'll go to the production item subgroup and then I'll select an amicus item as a, a standing request save and close so that I can uh, specify what service items each party uh, is requesting at this time. Now, at this point, um, I'm going to save this case uh, because we're not uh, going to use the case level repository yet because uh, our, my production department has not scanned those exhibits yet. So I'll show in a minute. Uh, how we do that. So let me, let's go ahead and save this case. So I'm going to do save and close. You know, if you were paying attention when I was setting up those parties, that you know I made a boo-boo. Critical mistake. Do you know what that is? Uh, let's go back into this case. Let me double click into it. And let me go to the parties tab. The my critical mistake was that when I was setting up all these parties when I entered the plaintiff's attorney Mr. Plaintiff and I said the checkbox is wrong so let me go ahead and double click into that attorney uh, can you see which checkbox should be off yes the first one because this attorney who is not my client and uh, I'm not setting up the online repository for plaintiff side. I'm only doing it for my client who represents the defendant. So when I was setting up Mr. Plaintiff, that box that says allow case level repository access should be checked off so that he will not get the same benefit as my client. So that was my critical mistake. So you need to be very careful if you're entering the plaintiff's parties at the same time as your client to make sure that checkbox is always off. Now speaking of parties, let me show you a diagram that kind of explains what RBA does. Um, when we set up a case, which is the, the first folder here, the Lee versus junk motor, and we entered four case parties the three attorneys and one paralegal. Now, later on, we will be creating jobs for this case. Now, uh, in RBA, you can have unlimited number of jobs or depositions or videos or trials, or whatever, under each case for one case. So, now, as you create those jobs, in each job, there will be a tab called Job Parties. So in the example we just created, the case parties will have four people, but the job parties will inherit only three attorneys, not the paralegal, because the paralegal, the checkbox that says create, add to the job parties automatically, the checkbox is off. 
so that paralegal will not be copied down to the job level. Now, as we, as the reporter turns in each job, then we will be creating what's called witnesses. Again, one job can have multiple unlimited number of witnesses or deponents. So you have uh, three levels of data structure. The case at the top level, and then jobs in the middle, and then ultimately at the bottom will be witnesses. And uh, in which witnesses, uh, it also will have a tab called witness parties, who are the attorneys actually are ordering that particular deponent. So if you have uh, the four people at the case parties, we have uh, only three people at the job parties, we might only have two people in the witness parties actually ordering transcripts. So these are the, this is a diagram that kind of shows you uh, the parties concept. And also think of this as a, like a DNA. You have a, a grandpa at the case level, then some of the DNAs goes down to the father, which are job level. And then the last level, which is at the son, at uh, child level, is the witness level.